Hello everyone, Lone Wolf here. Welcome to the first episode of The Chaos Report, a new weekly or bi-weekly Path of Exile series that will focus on the economy of the Softcore Challenge League. In this episode, I'll be covering the items you should look out for during the first few days of the Legion launch, as many of them will likely see a huge increase in price compared to previous leagues, and thus you might have otherwise missed. Keep in mind that these are educated guesses or predictions, and as such, they might not be entirely accurate. Invest at your own risk. With that out of the way, let's get started. The first item on our list is actually two items. The Unique Jewels Tempered and Transcended Flash will likely see a huge increase in price. These are jewels that were added back in Incursion League and are only available through the end boss of the Incursion Temple, the Val Omnitect. The reason these jewels will see a huge increase in price is that, that the passive tree has seen an overall, which includes a very particular three node cluster of strength nodes near the Marauder's Jewel Socket. As such, this jewel alone, once socketed, provides an absolutely insane 75% critical strike multiplier. The improved version, Transcendent Flash, will also boast a 3 to 4 physical damage reduction on top, depending on the travel nodes chosen. As such, keep an eye out for your temple runs and add an exception to your loot filter to make sure they aren't filtered out. The second item on our list will be the unique body armor carcass jack. I don't think I need to tell people exactly why this body armor is going to be huge, but I'll give you a quick rundown anyway. The new melee update has added a lot of new AoE scaling and abilities, as well as making older AoE based abilities more popular. One of the most popular builds this league will be a cyclone based melee. As such, an item that scales both the AoE radius as well as the AoE damage dealt is going to see a huge amount of play. Add it to your filters and claim those exiles. Similarly, this next item will see a rise in popularity due to the previously mentioned cyclone as well, Nagamahu's Flame, an old time favorite of all the Cyclone players, this axe will undoubtedly see a huge amount of play this league as well. It adds a huge amount of quality of life through life gain on hit if spec'd into it, very good damage, and absolutely fantastic scaling for a usually low to moderate enterprise. As such, a lot of build guides that people will be following or making themselves will likely look towards this weapon as a stepping stone or even as a late game option for high tier farming. Additionally, keep an eye out for the often forgotten Dereso Salute neckpiece. With the added scaling of melee abilities through weapon range, this long forgotten neckpiece is not only usable with Cyclone, but with basically all melee abilities, as it also adds a lot of resistances. This can even be considered a great only fixing option for resistance problems and can substitute usually more expensive neckpieces. This item will likely be phased out after a few days or weeks though as weapon range is also a craftable on amulets, and as such will be preferable on Elder and Shaper bases, so don't invest too heavily on this one. Moving on from Cyclone for a minute, you can instead throw a life search for the Rislathus Coil Unique Belt. With the addition of the Impale support and a lot of Impale nodes on the tree, as well as a huge amount of physical damage increasing auras and support skills, we'll be seeing more purely physical based builds than ever before. Following that, you should keep an extra close eye on this bad boy, as the increase in physical damage this belt provides is unparalleled by any other belt in the game, and might see some use as a result. This belt, however, is by nature very rare, and as such, the prices could vary wildly, so be careful. Another common option, however, is the Lion's Roar. If you haven't figured that the Lion's Roar is going to be insanely expensive, I don't know if you've been paying attention to anything that has transpired over the past few weeks. This flask is used in pretty much every single melee build in the entire game and is also considered one of the most powerful ones at the same time. Lion's Roar usually hovers around multiple dozen chaos at the beginning of a league, but this time around, as everyone will be trying their hands on melee in one way or another, it'll likely go up to never before seen heights. One upside, however, is that this will allow you to farm the respective divination card Earth Drinker on the Dune map, which is now T8. The Oasis, as a potential alternative leveling spot, of, to the Blood Aqueducts, maybe, as well as the Desert Map. Depending on how high the prices for this will go, you might want to adjust your Atlas strategy accordingly. Another item that could see a reoccurrence like the Carcass Jack is the Lore Weave. Not long forgotten, but a, rather a fallen out of favor chest piece, the Lore Weave might see a resurgence due to the added physical damage it provides, as well as the overall stat spread that it gives its wearer. Many abilities and nodes on the tree now scale physical damage, even harder than before, and crit is also way easier to get. Thusly, keep an eye on the unique rings as well, as those are required to create the lore weave after all. As is a trend at this point, this item is also based on physical prowess, the Facebreaker Unique Gloves. 
A lot of people are excited to try out these gloves again, with all the added base damage to abilities, as this base damage isn't reliant on weapons, and Facebreaker loves to scale pure physical damage. Previously, it was fairly hard to scale any kind of Facebreaker build due to the lack of natural scaling possibilities such as flat added fizz or passive tree notes. However, with the addition of the Rage Support Gem, the new and improved Berserker Ascendancy, and many other small features like this, the Facebreaker is very likely going to see a large resurgence. Especially well rolled ones will be going for a frick load of chaos. As such, add it to your filter and life searches. Paradoxica, the infamous double damage sword from Betrayal League. This poppy is absolutely falling under the radar for a lot of people right now, I would say. What made this weapon great in previous leagues is that it acted as a duplicator for any and all added damage mods. With the addition of the base physical damage and a lot of melee abilities, as well as the previously mentioned bonuses that apply to Facebreaker as well, this weapon will very likely become an extremely powerful tool this league, if you can manage to get a decent version of it. Definitely keep an eye out for it, but with the nerfs to Abyssal Jewels, we might see a lot of people skip out on this one. Time will tell how this one will shake out, to be honest. Moving on to our last items on the list, the Prismatic Edge. Already a great weapon before, this weapon will be seeing some changes in the, league on, in the Legion League. It is now only obtainable from the actual Legion content, and it will also receive some tweaks. We aren't entirely certain how the tweaks will end up, but what is certain is that the Prismatic Eclipse's ability to increase weapon range as well as its already amazing global attack speed bonuses will make it a strong contender for leveling weapons. In addition, the new 8% Slayer crit node might make this weapon even more formidable for late game map clearing, depending on how the weapon's tweaks will influence the damage potential. Keep it in mind. The last item on the list are the Hemophilia Unique Gloves. With the previously mentioned popularity in physical based and pure physical melee setups, this item represents one of the only ways to destroy corpses outside of the Gladiator Ascendancy. Especially with the rework of Immortal Call, a lot of melee builds might end up suffering against porcupines or other on-death effects that they could previously either ignore thanks to Immortal Call's invulnerability, or get around by splashing some cold damage through Hatred, Held of Ice, or Fizz to Cold Conversion to shatter the enemies. With those options gone, these gloves are the only choices left. So keep an eye on them and consider investing. As a closing note, don't forget all the obvious items, such as Starforge, its Series Disfavor, Carnage Heart, Terminus S, Tomb Fist, and many many others that will also see their prizes skyrocket due to their natural demand. And with those last few uniques, I'll be ending my prediction list here. I hope this video was informative and you learned something from it that you can apply to your own game in the next following week. Please let me know if I missed anything or you would have wanted me to talk about anything in specific that I might not have covered. Also let me know what your personal predictions are going to be for these coming weeks. Furthermore, let me know if you'd like to see me cover a particular topic regarding Path of Exile. I'm always willing to explore new video types, like build guides or anything like that. Lastly, give me some feedback on this new series. How did you enjoy it? Did it cover too many items or too few? Let me know. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like or dislike button, and check me out over on twitch.tv slash lonewolf. You can find a link to my stream down below in the description as well. And with that, thanks for watching, and keep farming those axles.